Yo, what's up, Droners, and welcome to this edition of Droner News. We have NASA dealing with drones. We have drones being federalized by the federal government, and we also have drones hopping through lakes. So let's jump in. Coming up first, we're going to start with the Drones Federalizing Act or whatever it's called. I'm, this, is, this is a little complicated, so bear with me. So pretty much a group of senators, Democrats and Republicans from four states, California, Connecticut, Utah, and Arizona, have come together to put together a drone regulation act that is going to allow to be able to more clarify where drones are regulated and where they aren't. And also even more so specifically uh, regulate how private property is regulated when it comes to the air above it. Like how much above your property is your property? Um, that's actually not a really a thing that's truly been defined all that well because it never needed to be up until this point. Um, and what they're proposing is that it will be your property, 200 feet above your property will be yours, and then you know, 200 to 400 feet above that will be where most drones are allowed to fly. Um, which actually, for me, I'm not completely against that because normally I wouldn't need to go below 200 feet to get most of the shots I want to get when it's on private property. On public property, that'd be a whole different thing, but they didn't actually address that in what I read. Um, so the bill is actually um, going to be a collaboration between the FAA, the federal government, and state and local governments. Uh, it's really complicated, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much saying that the federal government will have regulations over all federal lands when they're flying over that, and then 200 to 400 feet, and they'll say the state and locals will have the rest of the regulation 200 feet below. Um, but it doesn't clarify how they can regulate that and how they won't, and that'll be up to the FAA to work with up to um, 10 different municipalities to be able to make regulation recommendations and stuff. Um, there's a lot going on with this, to be honest, and um, I'm probably going to be doing a whole separate video specifically just on what happens with this, because this is the first step in drone regulation that's going to be really important, so stay tuned. All right, coming to number two, drones delivering donuts in Denver. Uh, now this one, first of all, I'm going to say, the reason I say this one, this is, a, this is I've done a lot of drone delivery stories, I'm kind of sick of them. Um, but the reason I brought this one up is because I actually called Denver, the city of Denver, Colorado, and was like, yo, I want to fly drones there. And their response was, we don't allow commercial flights in Denver, but we're working on it. And apparently they're working on it by allowing uh, a publicity event to happen where they literally deliver donuts to policemen. <laughs> like, for real? The police are like, yeah, hey, that's a good idea. Let's look at some donuts delivered to us. It'll make our public image way better. But they also deliver it to the mayor um, and the fire department. Yay, that made it better. Um, but it's actually on National Donut Day, which apparently is on June 1st, which I had never heard of until this year. Thank you, social media. Um, it was Drone Dispatch that did it, um, and they did it to make sure it was legal. They had spotters in all the right places and the planned landing areas. Um, but the mayor, Michael Hancock, waited for the drone delivery outside of City Hall and spoke to press about how important it is to think they're starting integrating drones into everyday life. Uh, I guess he's a forward thinker, even though they're behind the curve on commercial drone permits. Um, but who kn Who knew? I'm a big fan of actually cities and municipalities getting behind working with drones, so I hope this actually does lead towards that, and I think it'll be a good thing overall. So I'm going to keep my eyes on Denver, and hopefully they'll let me fly there next to my call. Coming in next, we have NASA starting big projects on autonomous systems, which include drones. Um, NASA is assembling three teams on three major projects that will tackle advanced technology um, for autonomous systems, including self-driving cars and drones. The projects include developing certifications for self-driving cars, drones, testing methods to verify remote pilot drones are fit to fly, which I'm really interested about. Like, how are you going to do remote piloted drones fit to fly tests? Um, it just because I guess it does our system check? I'm really curious what that is. Um, and also using, this is the one that's most interesting to me, is also using communication tech to develop a jam-free network for hundreds that hundreds of drones can fly on. So pretty much creating like supersonic highways or drones that can, you know, areas that drones can fly or hundreds of drones can fly at the same point in the same time where they don't crash into each other and they also don't have communications issues with one another. That's going to be a real issue. Intel's already working on that and doing some really good stuff and having them all being communicated from the same point. But having a, a hundreds of different drones with d hundreds of different transmitters or tasks or things going by each other in the same space can be really confusing. And even NASA admitted that they might not be able to solve all these problems, but why not give it a shot? So perfecting, you know, it's a big deal. And NASA plans to do a lot of stuff with drones to aid their work, and they want to use drones that can fly autonomously on Mars to be able to get additional things that happen. So like, oh yeah, we landed a rover on not Mars, and then a quadcopter or whatever flies off and gets a bunch more stuff. Really cool, really interesting things, and I think NASA is where it's at when it comes to the peak of drone technology. Um, perhaps they should call DJI and, you know, work with them or something. I don't know. Either way, NASA doing dope stuff. Coming up next, we have this really, 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 really cool technology that's also really simple. It's a lake hopping drone. So, this whole idea came about because there's certain areas of the world, like Canada, <laughs> that have a lot of lakes. Or Michigan. I'm from Michigan. There's a lot of lakes everywhere. Um, Minnesota. All those places up there in the north have a lot of lakes. 
And there's also a problem with drones flying long distances. Now we know that fixed wing drones can go much further distances than quadcopters just because of the way that they work. But they still don't really have, like, if you want to go from one side of a country to another, there's not really a way a battery-powered drone can do that, unless you put solar panels on it and have it land in lakes and just sit there and charge and then take off from the lake. But, but B, how can we do that? How can you take off from a lake? Oh, it's so funny that you ask. They took examples from a duck, a mallard duck, takes off from the lake by flapping its wings in a weird way. It hits the water and then it goes straight up. And what they did was like, well, if we take a drone and make it so that the drone can turn its propeller up, and then as it's taking off, the propeller, as you can see, falls into the, back into the line of how, look, you can just see it. I'm not very good at explaining it. But it's really cool how it falls out of the water. And it also can land any way in the water and it can right itself in the water. So like it can be flipped over in the water and then bam, it flips itself over quite easily. So there's really no problem with it. It can, fall, it can land any way it wants in the water. It's completely waterproof. And then the thing flips itself over, takes off and go anywhere you want. I love this because you can take this kind of, I love these little kind of things like this with drone technology is because one little thing like this and you piece this together with a bunch of other technology that's being developed and then you're going to have like these super drones that are pretty much uncrashable, unbreakable, unwater, like completely waterproof, can fly anywhere, can fly super long distances, can fly in very precise ways and do all these kind of cool things. I'm excited about this obviously, but this is a piece of that technology that allows drones to go further, allows drones to be in water and allows them to take off safely and land in any way you want. I love it. So eyes are peeled. And coming in last but not least is something that perplexes me. I, I can't quite understand what's going on here. Um, so I, we all know drones are a hot button issue. That's the whole reason that, you know, I love drones. Actually, no, I love drones separately from them being a hot button issue. But people love drones. They're like an attractive thing. And some, sometimes things happen that don't make sense because of that. Um, for example, there's a company called Control Me Robotics. And they're a small, like, third party making drone company that literally builds drones and gets aerial footage for people. And they've been around since 2014. And they got bought. And I was like, OK, cool, they got bought for a million bucks. Congratulations, guys. You're based out of Venice, California. You got bought. You got a million dollars. Enjoy your life. But who bought them is what perplexes me. Snapchat, you know, like the, uh, the, the, the social media app that just recently has been devastated by Instagram by stealing their exact platform and doing literally everything Snapchat does. I should probably be holding this when I do that. Um, yeah, I was doing this without, OK. But either way. They bought this drone company. Snapchat's been talking about working with drones and stuff. But for me, I'm just like, what are you really going to do? Like, what is the Snapchat going to do with, like, owning a drone company? I don't understand what they think they're really going to be bringing to the table here. So I just truly don't actually understand what this is. Um, maybe they have something, like, I can't even imagine yet. But that's why I had to put it in Droner News this week because, um, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. But maybe we'll figure it out later. So stay tuned. Eyes are on it. Droners, thank you for checking out this edition of Droner News. And something really interesting happened the other day. Is I, on my new thing that we're doing, Droner Dialogue, I talked about my problems with the DJI Repair thing. You should check it out, DJI Repairs and all that. And DJI actually responded, like wrote a whole letter inside of the comment section of that whole video. And I'm making another video about that. But either way, you should check it out. It's really interesting. Another thing you should check out are these two videos because they're doped in a mug. You should always subscribe because that allows us to do what we're doing. And as always, make sure you stay fly.